this morning I got an email from someone and they asked, is it possible to make a graduated symbol map using something other than the default set of symbols that are available? Can you use an image? They asked, is it possible to do something like a splatter of paint? Right? And I said, absolutely you can. And so I took some screenshots and showed them how and sent an email, but I thought, why not uh, make a video to share with everybody how to do this kind of thing? So I will. Okay, so I'm adding some data to an ArcGIS Pro project. I have a project that I call Scratch that just has everything the way I like it instead of starting a new one every time when I just want to goof around. Top tip. Um, so I'll add data and there's a category here called Living Atlas, thereby connecting you to a cornucopia of geographic delights. I'm going to search for counties just as a an example data set. I'll use counties generalized. Let's go with that. Here we go. So here are some counties in the United States. Um, let me just, because I'm cartographically fastidious, switch this to an appropriate projection. And I'll just focus for now on the lower 48. Sorry, Alaska and Hawaii, I love you. And we'll take a look at the symbology. So this is by default, of course, a single symbol. And it's just like fleshy fill. But let's choose graduated symbols. And the data, okay, cool, population, that's what I wanted. Um, let me open this up a little bit. So instead of natural breaks, which I don't really like natural breaks, I'm gonna choose standard deviation. And I'll kind of bump up the, the resolution of that statistical breakup. And here we go. This is um, oh, look at this. This is a graduated symbology of population in U.S. counties. Bigger circles mean more people. That's normal, right? Um, actually, if I scroll down, haha, I see some pretty interesting things. Um, this is where we can make our change instead of the boring default symbol. Defaults should be boring, by the way, that's okay. But you shouldn't accept defaults. Let me first minimize the appearance of this background stroke. And I'll make it a very light gray. Okay, so here's our template. And the question was, can I use a picture, like any kind of picture? And the answer is yes, absolutely. You can use image files. You can use um, SVG files if you want nice scalable vector graphics that don't pixelate, which is awesome. I tend to use PNG files a lot because I can make PNG files easily and um, they have transparent backgrounds. So if you do something like a JPEG with a solid background, even if it's white, it's going to look dumb. Sorry, don't use a JPEG. Use a PNG or an SVG. So here it says shape marker by default. And I'm going to choose picture marker instead. I'll change its quality to picture quality. And here's where I can browse for a file. And I've got a graphic, looks like this. I've got a green paint drop right here. I've got a white one too if I wanted to tint it dynamically, but in this case I'll keep it simple and just go with a pre-colored green paint splatter. And I'll hit OK. And if I zoom in here you can see, yeah, sure enough, there's my image. It's got a transparent background, no, right, no white background there. And I'll hit Apply. And if I go back here, now I can just start fussing around with the size. Like I'll make it Gosh, let's do 10 points to 100 point. Bananas. It's bananas. Okay, anyways, yes, you can do that. And you can get really crazy with this, this kind of thing. Ken Field made his Pollock election map using a method like this with a similar graphic. Um, and uh, the winner of Esri's map gallery in 2019's user conference used a similar technique as well to map the location of trees in a park. And they made a really beautiful map. I'll link to it in the description below if I can find it. Okay, so you might notice, let's, you know, let's just tone the 
this down a bit. You might notice that all these paint splats are the exact same orientation, which is very unlike a paint splat, right? So you can do a little bit more to this in the very symbology by attribute tab. There's a thing called rotation and you can rotate it based on one of the attributes or you can just say, just kind of randomly fling it here and there rotation wise. And then you get something that's more organic. These little dots are randomly rotated. There you go. That's a nice little pro tip, wink. Okay, uh, so anyways, I sent an email like this to the person who asked me this question this morning and they said, oh great, thanks. Can you do it in ArcGIS online? And I knew they were gonna ask that. I, sh I should have just answered it right away. The answer is, yes, you can. So here I am in ArcGIS online with an unnamed, unsaved map, just generic. So let's put the same data in here by adding and then browsing living atlas layers. Like I said, living atlas is where it's at. And I'll choose counties and we'll see what's available. There's that layer I had. I'm just gonna add that. If I click this, I get more information. If I click this, it'll just add it right away. So go back here and look at my content, which is where it lists out my layers and my table of content. And you know what? I'm gonna get rid of this base map because I don't want a base map. Thank you very much. So I'll just make these guys transparent there. Hide this, pretend it doesn't exist. Okay, US counties generalized, and here's how we change the style in ArcGIS Online. So I'll click this icon, and um, I'll choose, golly, where is it? Total population, it's alphabetical. Population 2015, there it is, woo! Okay, and I'll, okay, good. It, did it automatically. Counts and amounts. See, smart mapping saw that I had a numeric value like this. It was raw, and they said, you should probably use counts and amounts, which is graduated symbology. Cool. So let's go into the options, and there's a little doodad right here called symbols. And in symbols, there's all kinds of options. There's different categories. Oh my goodness, there's even a firefly, if you can believe it. Um, but none of those are good enough for us. We want our own custom graphic. How do we do that? Well, I'm gonna use an image. So if I click this, oh, okay. So it opens up this little URL bar. I can't upload an image to use here. I link to an existing online image. Well, okay, so that's just a step I'll have to add here. So I'll go to my personal blog, which is just a website where I can dump images that I wanna use as symbols in ArcGIS Pro. You can use whatever you want, as long as it's a publicly accessible link or URL. So I'll uh, come here, go into my drafts, pay no attention to this stuff. It's unimportant. I'm just uploading an image to the internet. That's it. I'll come here, I'll say image, and I'll browse. There it is. Custom graduate symbols. And here's my green paint splatter and okay so there we go and I'm gonna right click this and copy the image address now back here I can just paste this and see that little extension after PNG question mark width equals 200 that's just something my blog tacked onto it to show me a preview size version I'm gonna get rid of that let's hit there it is. Okay, good. We did it. I'll hit OK. There they are. Let's make them bigger. Gosh, how do I do that? Specify size range right here. I don't know. I had it in Pro, but here I'll, let's make it 80. You know what? Let's make it 100. 10 to 100. Cool. There you go. This is how you can use your own image graphic or graduated symbology in ArcGIS Online and in ArcGIS Pro. Thank you very much. Have fun. 
show me the maps that you make using this trick and don't forget to look for the links to Ken's election map and the winning map uh, from the Esri UC map gallery in the links below. Thanks, have a great day. Happy mapping!